Hank Greenberg, All Around All Star, by Becky Cheston. It was July 1st, 1945. It had been four years, one month, and 24 days since Hank Greenberg had last thrilled fans with a home run. Now, back from World War II, he was again up at bat. A cheering crowd waited to see what the star slugger for the Detroit Tigers would do. Before the war, Greenberg had twice been voted the American League's most valuable player. And in 1938, before Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were even born, Greenberg gave baseball fans a summer to remember when he almost wiped out Babe Ruth's home run record. But on that day in 1945, fans must have been wondering, did Greenberg still have what it takes to be an all-star? The answer was in his actions. Greenberg smacked a homer into the left field seats. The secret to Greenberg's success as a ball player was hard work and determination. Even when people said he was too tall or called him names because he was Jewish, Greenberg always held on to his dream of playing in the big leagues. I wasn't a natural ball player like Babe Ruth or Willie Mays, but if you practice the way I did, all day long, day after day, you're bound to get pretty good, Greenberg said. As a child, Greenberg rushed home every day after school, grabbed his bat, glove, and ball, and dashed to the ballpark. To work on his hitting, he asked friends to pitch to him. To improve his fielding, he asked friends to hit the ball to him while he counted how many he could catch in a row. In 1929, Greenberg was invited to play baseball for several professional teams. He joined the Detroit Tigers. In 1930, he started training in the minor leagues. He spent three long years in the minors, watching, practicing, and learning. Finally, in 1933, Greenberg got his chance. In his first major league start with the Tigers, Greenberg smashed the ball out of the park. A home run! Playing baseball wasn't always fun for Greenberg, though. Whenever he went up to bat, some of the fans and players would call him names because he was Jewish. But over time, as he led the Tigers to win four pennants and two World Series, he earned the respect of those around him. In the summer of 1934, Greenberg did something else that made people admire him. The Tigers were in a race to win the American League pennant. Every game mattered. But one game was scheduled on Yom Kippur, an important Jewish holiday. Greenberg decided not to play. Everyone was talking about it. Edgar Guest, a famous poet, even wrote about Greenberg. We shall miss him on the infield and shall miss him at the bat, but he's true to his religion, and I honor him for that. When Greenberg entered his synagogue that day, everyone applauded. Greenberg had become a hero. Greenberg was also a good team player. In 1940, the Tigers had a new hitter. The only position on the field he could play was first base, Greenberg's job. The Tigers asked Greenberg to play in the outfield. Some players might have stormed off in anger, but not Greenberg. Instead, he agreed to switch. At first, he had trouble playing left field, but he practiced long hours before and after games. He even got the peanut vendors and kids who hung around the ballpark to hit to him. During World War II, Greenberg was the first baseball star to join the armed forces. He left baseball, a job that paid him $11,000 a month, to earn $21 a month as a soldier. My country comes first, Greenberg said. Once again, people admired Greenberg for more than his baseball talent. In 1947, Greenberg retired from playing baseball, but he never really left the game behind. He worked as a team manager and an owner. In 1956, he received baseball's highest honor when he was elected to the Hall of Fame. 
He was the first Jewish player to be elected. Greenberg died on September 5, 1986. He will always be remembered as an all-star, both on and off the playing field.